Hi, welcome to a first of a series of interviews that we'll be running um, with graduates from Generation Ireland. I'm joined here today by Mo Edin, soon to be Max Edin, I believe. How are you today, Mo? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Yeah, good, good. Can't complain. Uh, the weather's good in Dublin for once. Uh, you're living in Sligo, Mo, aren't you? Oh yeah, all the way north, unpredictable weather. <laughs> good, 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 good. Well, it's, it's sometimes in the summer it's all right, winter is bad. But um, to give some context, so I'm the Partnerships Director for Generation Ireland. Uh, previously, I worked in agency recruitment for eight years, predominantly focused on tech. But I have moved over to the world of non So to give you some context to who Generation Ireland are, I think it's probably best to look at maybe where the need came from. So, you know, throughout my career within recruitment, um, I don't think we do enough to drive people towards tech jobs. Um, the demand and supply issue has always been there. So how do we change that? So Generation Ireland, um, Generation Globally was founded in 2015 by McKinsey & Co, the large consultancy, and it was to fill that gap. So basically what we do is we are an education to employment uh, charity that focus on placing people into highly skilled roles where they would have had um, barriers previously so breaking down those barriers making it accessible how do we do that we run intensive boot camps and um, within Ireland we're currently running four three on the tech side and one on the green sector side within Ireland we run a course on AWS data analytics and we've got IT support with cyber on the green side we're running a retrofit advisor course and um, it's completely free um, for all our graduates and we do that through backing um, and funding with corporate partners, government um, funding and also employer contributions. Um, the reason why I think it adds so much value is in terms of the demographics. People that had barriers previously, you know, be it in terms of cost, education, being dependents, variety of other reasons which we'll obviously get into um, in this interview um, we, we give them a blank slate we take that off the, the table and just give them the tools and the support to be able to get through it and we're trying to drive that um, into the future so um, within Ireland I think everything is statistics it's data but it doesn't really give a sense of the personal story behind the journey um, and people have life changing you know uh, careers and big changes in their life throughout you know what's the personal story there we're trying to break down inferiority complexes you know we're trying to drive more people and how we do that is shared experience everyone you know has you know that uh, imposter syndrome and um, at certain times I know I've had it in my career anytime I've moved up into another role you know you do have that and it's just a natural feeling but with sharing our experiences chatting out in the open hopefully it just draws more people towards you know highly skilled roles breaks down those barriers and um, ultimately you know people have a uh, higher quality of living and you know better society so that's what we're here to do today and um, so Mo thanks very much for joining us I know you've given a, a kind of brief intro there but maybe tell us a bit about your background and um, where you're from when you moved to Ireland and um, just general kind of in introduction to Mo. Absolutely uh, well thank you um, I am actually a very very young relatively uh, Ukrainian. I've recently recently come here to Ireland uh, due to the situation over there uh, less than a year ago actually and what I I had absolutely no idea uh, like what I what like to do when I first came here right uh, I saw I just saw a bunch of trajectories where I could go to I saw a lot of opportunities yada yada and I wanted I wanted to find something to really put my effort into essentially uh, I found uh, I found, like, luckily, Generation, uh, where they are basically, it was introduced to me as a springboard into the tech industry, and considering I had no background regarding that whatsoever, uh, I, just, just a bit about, like, pretty much all I did was uh, I was an outsourced agent for, for my company based in the USA. Uh, and we just did a lot of speaking to warehouses, drivers, like truck drivers, yada yada. I was a dispatch, essentially. Um, and that kind of helped me develop my language, which turns out was very, very helpful. <laughs> um, and I, I, even even with such a such a limited background and pretty much no experience whatsoever, I, I uh, got accepted to Generation, luckily, and pretty much gave it my all. And within, within the year... Well, not even a year after, I'm in a very, very, um, I would say, 
in my desired position right now, where where I'd love to be with a bright future. Brilliant. Yeah, no, look, thanks for the introduction. I know we're going to deep dive further into that, um, into the role and obviously the generation experience. But I suppose the point that you touched upon there was you didn't have any experience. Generation accepted you. And that's exactly what we're, I suppose, you know, that's what we're trying to tap into is that people don't have to have any experience. It's one of those catch-22. Like when I look at job adverts in my previous career and they're looking for entry-level talent and it's looking for two years plus, I'm like, well, how did they get the job? So, yeah. you know, um, people just need to take a chance. How do you do that? You know, I always say in your first six to 12 months in any job, you're, you learn more than a, than a course. The, the course is just to facilitate you to a level that you have the fundamentals to do the job. You still need the employers to, you know, take those fundamentals, hone them and t- kind of take it to the next level. So thanks for that. So like in terms then you talked about obviously communication, your previous role, you know, was there ever an interest in technology? And I ask this quite openly because some people are very passionate about it. Other people, you know, fall into it. I fell into technology. Best thing that ever happened to me. Um, but just on that, would you have a passion for technology, Mo? Uh, absolutely. It's it's um, it's actually something that I was very little into. Uh, even even like all the way back at my initial position. Um, it, it wasn't it wasn't anything technical whatsoever but i found uh that learning how to automate some of the some of the stuff that we're doing would make it go by a lot faster where it's like a lot of effort initially and then no effort instead of just like a sustained long effort um like medium effort and that that type of aspect in tech really really inspired me uh and when i realized that that's something that you could actually basically deep dive into uh like just build a career out of i i really enjoyed that that was very very appealing to me i enjoyed that part okay cool yeah so like i think everyone has their reasons for going towards it. and i suppose i forgot to mention at the start you graduated from our aws cohort wasn't it in october of last year correct yes okay cool cool so like in terms of that then what did you know about aws before you got involved did you know anything oh absolutely nothing no Okay, cool, cool. Well, like obviously, I'm coming in. Uh, I've worked in recruitment, so I've known a lot about it. So, um, it might be good to kind of move it along them and try and understand your generation experience. So, what I want to do is obviously take it down from, you know, pre-program, obviously when you were on the program, and then post-program, obviously how you felt. So, you know, I think be as honest as possible because, as I said, not everyone has you know, experience in technology. And I think, you know, people, I remember in college, you'd be stressed out and you kind of came together and you got through it together. So I suppose taking the first point there, pre-program, how did you find out about Generation Forestry and what made you actually go towards it? Um, It's, it was kind of by chance, really. Um, Not really with marketing, but a little bit. It feels that way anyway. Um, I was just in an interior office um, you guys, you guys had the adverts up on the wall. I was just in the waiting room, browsing, browsing through it. Just happened to take a picture of it, and later browsed it. Uh, just applied out of, out of, just to see what would happen. Really, I, I did not expect to even like get an email back or anything. I thought it was just like an old advert. Um, and luckily, luckily, I got, I got an old that uh, got a reply back. Um, the recruitment process, like, really, really, kind of. Uh, it was it, it was a good um, I would say experience to see what you're gonna go into because it's it's somewhat it's I, I don't want to say fully tough but it's somewhat tough to get into it and go into the interview stages and yada yada but that's sort of a sort of a skill that you require if you're ever gonna go into into the tech right uh, or into the tech field so it's it's sort of it's sort of like gives you a little bit a, a bit of a taste into how it's gonna be. Yeah, exactly. And look, I, I think, you know, people always, when they were in college, say, oh, well, why are we learning this? And then you go into, you know, industry and you're like, oh, well, it kind of did benefit me because it's just, you're, you know, you're building up that experience, you're following a process, you know, and that, that's ultimately, obviously, what our admissions process is. Um, like, I think for people maybe that are listening in and don't understand what Intrio is, maybe in your own words, Mo, what made you go towards in, in trio and i suppose and um, oh. maybe tell a couple of listeners what that was oh sure um it, it's it's just a government office essentially it, it's just you 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 will fi- you will, if you 
come here in a similar situation that I did, you would absolutely find yourself in those types of offices. Uh, those types of offices, and especially people who re I would say require those types of uh, boot camps or those types of um, you know springboards, essentially, uh, which is how I've heard generation being described a lot, and it's a very good descriptor. Um, a lot of people who require that springboard would absolutely find it, would absolutely be there. Cool, cool. Well, I suppose, what months did you actually move over to Ireland, Mo, last year? Or was it last year? Uh, it was last year. I moved, uh, I believe it was May, like late May. Okay, cool, cool. And then obviously, yeah. you know, by October you'd obviously enlisted in, um, and I think you probably would have enlisted in the program a lot earlier than that. From when you moved over to Ireland to actually getting on the program with ourselves, how long did that take? Uh, not long at all. I don't, um, I could give you an exact number if you... Yeah, or even generally speaking. It took two I, months. I, two months, took, yeah. And look, I, or one and a half actually, yeah. I think, you know, I in terms of the, the value and one of the main reasons why I joined was in terms of the turnaround times you know if you look mm. at a traditional you know educational model you're talking you know four years if you're doing a master's you're talking probably nine to twelve months whereas with our boot camps they're quite intensive they run anywhere from 10 to 12 weeks so we're constantly running cohorts that can kind of meet demand um on an ongoing basis so i think it's good to obviously share that mo and you know it's probably by fate or by chance that obviously you are seeing the advert but um i'll pass it on to the admissions team who did a good job obviously with marketing to obviously attract uh, your level of talent um so you followed the process through with admissions did you do any sort of testing throughout the admissions process did you have to pass any criteria to actually get on the program um it wasn't i don't think it was any criteria i think it was more just to gauge your level of uh skills that are going to be used a lot in uh, if you're going to go into the into the field um such as research uh, like being brand new to a, to a topic and still needing to present it, that type of thing, uh, where they ask questions where when you initially read them, you have no clue what it even is and you have to figure that out uh, later down the line. Uh, that aspect, I'm still seeing it like in my day-to-day -day life when, when actually doing my proper job now. So, Yeah, it, it's, it's that kind of fill in the gaps where you can and if not, you know go to the source and try and figure out what it is and understanding and that is day to day we don't know everything i kind of laugh that when we're in school you know there, there's success and there's failure and you're kind of punished for failure but when you're in a real job failure is just a natural part of it and it's just how yeah. do we overcome it as a team so um yeah so look thanks very much i suppose for setting the scene obviously you've moved to ireland you know everything's up in the air and we know the reasons why um but it, obviously you know it's um it's inspiring and, and it's great to hear that obviously you're directed to the right places once you arrived and obviously we've arrived here now so you're just getting ready to actually start the program maybe could you share your experiences of maybe from an onboarding perspective what you were supplied with um and also maybe then maybe your first couple of weeks on program um well absolutely uh, well with the program and throughout it, especially in the in the beginning, um, I got a mentor, which uh, pretty much helped like helped me out a lot, and we'll get into that I assume. Um, and first, uh, I believe it was month ish, we would have very sparsely uh, sparse meetings, uh, just to generally like introduce who, who your instructor is going to be, what you're going to be, the environment you're going to be in, the people around you, the the new schedule that you're going to adhere to, all of that. And they, they kind of ease you into that before fully fully hitting you with all the all the new information, all the new um, pretty, pretty much only information. That's the only new thing that that happens when you're actually finally in there. I've, you're prepared for everything else before that. You know who you're going to be with. You know when you're going to be there. All of that. Um, so it, I, I would say it was very very good in that aspect. Cool. Yeah. And look, I, I think onboarding experience is everything, and that goes even when you're in a job whether you're in college, you know, that initial feel, do I feel supported, is everything working okay? So that that's good to good to know. Like, um I, I'm very conscious that obviously with generation we try and support 
give the tools as much as possible but I suppose on program there is a lot of self accountability um, to actually get through the program and get as much out of it as possible so maybe could you tell me a bit about what the course content focused on maybe from a high level um, and then I suppose what was expected of you Mo uh, absolutely uh, well the, the, from from what I remember initially, like first half, uh, it was just a lot of what cloud providers are, right? So it focused a lot on AWS, but the um, it didn't only specifically talk about AWS. It also ta uh, talked about just typically what cloud providers are. So you had a lot of a lot of info, um, even if you weren't going to go into a specifically AWS environment, right? Uh, but uh, before any of that, even um, actually. It was it was just a lot of general tech stuff. So even even if you knew absolutely nothing whatsoever, never touched the keyboard in your life, it would still you would still know and understand what's going on behind the screen, what how to how to get certain things working, uh, etc. Um, to me, that was a lot and a lot of information because I had no idea what any of it was, um, and I feel like that's where a lot of my effort went. Uh, I um, and this was this was kind of I was kind of known for this in, in in my group where I uh, after like uh, after every day I would um, pretty much go through all the recordings uh, go through all the resources and, and my notes yada yada and just list them out like list the bullet points of that that happened that day and I would share them with uh, with all the people that um, that were in uh, with me as well like all the students and stuff and i, I kind of became known for that where people would just like go through my summary real quick and just like move on to the next day so you're, you're, that, you're that helped not, me out a lot you were that person that we all got the notes off in college so yeah. uh, <laughs> we, we um we're always appreciative of people like you in the world mo but um no i, I really like the fact because i, I you know, I, I suppose when we were in second level in Ireland, I don't know what it was like in the Ukraine, but like secondary school in Ireland, you're spoon fed a lot of the information and they have to make you pass. But I suppose when you go to further education, the first thing that was mentioned to me in college was, you know, here's the information, learn it, you know, that kind of way. And I think, you know, in real life, that's the elements of it in industry as well is that here's the information what do we have to do with it you need to put it in your your own head so i like that kind of accountability on your side um so maybe you know at times everything's great sometimes we can be you know we we hit those kind of roadblocks etc like throughout the, the the program or the the weeks that you're on you know um how, how did you feel in terms of kind of workload pressure was there ever any you know um kind of days that you went jesus and then i suppose maybe how did you overcome them uh, well, I, I I believe the schedule I set for myself, uh, which which is apart from uh, the whole uh, all of all of the courses, was also very very like um, it worked very well with the, with the courses. So like I would uh, going going over everything, so I didn't have to repeat what whatever was previously uh, previously taught, and I found that the instructor that I had was very very good towards uh, pretty much either fact checking or uh, uh, like telling me so, uh, repeating a part that I didn't understand um, especially uh, like we had we had plenty and plenty of one-on-ones as well because he, he just had it was it was after after his work after my uh, after my school and he just cared that much it's just it's just it's the same with the mentor actually uh, they, it's just made of people that really care and they would support you regardless of how uh, how like overloaded you feel how um, stressed out you are maybe even burnt out like they absolutely care yeah yeah look i think that always makes a difference as well and that's probably what separates us from maybe other um boot camps etc we are non-profit we're all doing this because we have a vision that we care about and um like our ultimate goal is to to help people change lives so um love to hear obviously that feedback about the mentors and you know out of hours work and support that's that's in place so now that's excellent and i suppose towards the end and i i ask a lot of these questions when i have a vision of it in my own mind but i i like to obviously hear your own personal story um towards the end what did you have to do to come off program and i suppose how did you feel after um obviously when it was successful um you mean the the towards the last weeks? Yeah, yeah. I suppose like in terms of um, actually passing the course, what did that entail? Of and... oh, sure. Uh, well, considering what what it was kind of the summit was AWS, right? Um, so we were building up towards learn again earning the first certificate that AWS has, 
and they they gave us vouchers for that to be able to do it for free uh, from from our sides. Uh, gave us a certain deadline, and so that we'd all graduate together, have uh, go into the job market together, and they have they have the, an entire like. Uh, plan set out for you as soon as you do gra- uh, as soon as you do graduate in order to pair you up with uh, with employee employee sorry employers um, to become an employee and all of that uh, but the the certificate that you do achieve um, they absolutely do prepare you for that like very very well um, I was in hindsight I was a bit too stressed out about it <laughs> like the information that they gave was absolutely enough um, I tried to like go even beyond um, which is like self-apply pressure, kinda. But it, it was it was very very good. Um, I don't think a single person failed the the certificate. So yeah, no. Look at the, the obviously. Um, I, there's a nice kind of uh, spot where when you go into an exam and you realize, oh, I actually am prepared, and yeah. the stress goes, and you're just going about it. Um, yeah. Um, now delighted to obviously hear that as well so i think you touched upon it there briefly so it kind of fits into the team that i manage which is the partnerships team so within generation we're split into admissions we're split into uh, cmi which is like our on program curriculum and um, employability coaches etc and then we've got the partnerships team which i uh, manage for ireland and um, that's split into obviously um, employer outreach outreach um which myself and ashley do in ireland and then obviously neve who's the placement manager so in terms of that kind of support i know it starts prior to obviously um you completing and we get um involved at that stage so how much of a benefit was that i suppose mo and how did that stand to you um kind of post program and i might just make um I suppose the viewer is aware that our goal is to place people, whether it's directly or indirectly. So we do have people that find roles indirectly and that is a success for us as an organization because that's the ultimate goal. We're not looking for anything um, in return. Um, So maybe tell me a bit about that kind of placement exposure and then that'll kind of lead us in nicely to your new position. Uh, Sure. Uh, I mean, once you, uh, like you mentioned, even before you graduate, there's a lot of... um apart from the whole applying uh, there's also a lot of just general training of like you ha- would have mock interviews you would even have uh, real mock interviews which were people like actual employers that would uh, come on and they would they would have a uh, what they would consider to be an interview as if they were hiring uh, for a location and then they would give you the feedback individually and and so on um, and then you would work on whatever whatever feedback was there but after uh, and even before like you mentioned uh, graduating uh, there is there is a lot of a lot of help where I actually even found employers that I know I hadn't applied to like contacting me about about a certain position and I got uh, I gotta believe uh, two interviews just from not even applying before I even started applying myself, just because uh, you you it kind of uh, gave me that uh, all those connections and people were applying for me, that team was applying for me and all of us. So yeah, it was it was it was very very helpful. Uh, it's good to hear and like I think you know one of the things that we pride ourselves on as well is that we're not just training people from a technical perspective, we're training them from a soft skills perspective. The you know the intrinsic. Um, you know, kind of traits that you would need to actually fulfill a role. So I think we're hitting it across all the levels because, you know, certain other, you know, uh, education streams can be very, you know, non-practical. It's all theory based, but in the real world, it goes fully practical and you kind of need to tie them together. So it's great to obviously hear um, that that was beneficial and it's good that um, employers are reaching out to you. I think it just goes to show that there's so much demand in Ireland and I think a lot of people are put off by post pandemic and the, the slowdown um, in the economy but I think even the Irish uh, tech space is to grow by 4% this year and you know um, we're, we're in a lull so to speak but you know there's, there's so many jobs out there and I think that, that little snippet of information you've given has kind of given us a bit of confidence there as well so thanks for that Mo. Um, so obviously you've joined a role uh, you're a cloud associate with axa partners isn't that correct correct yeah brilliant well done what was it what was the feeling like when you secured the role i'm sure there was a celebration that night was there oh absolutely <laughs> yeah it's yeah. uh their 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 onboard or not onboarding their admissions process is very lengthy as well because it's such a huge corporate uh like corporate 
company, so you need to go through a lot of ladders. Um, and once once passing all of those, it felt like a, felt like a graduation in and of itself. Yeah, yeah. So like it, my recruitment experience, like that, you know, going through a portal, um, you know, can be painstaking. But what I always remember is once you get to the end, it's worth it. And you know, when you have your your tough days, I always say, remember that feeling when you secured the job offer. You know, it puts everything into perspective. But you know, finding your first role. Um, as a graduate in any space, but particularly tech, you know, is probably the hardest, you know, role that you'll ever find. And once you're on that ladder, you're away. You know, what whatever you want to make of your career, at least you have that opportunity to grow and learn now. So, um, can you tell me a bit about the role? You know, even in terms of your kind of working arrangements, um, your kind of day-to-day -day tasks, and I suppose with the kind of facet of, you know, what did I learn in the course and do I implement it, I suppose, in, in the real world environment? Absolutely. Um, well, the the job itself, they, um, to, to, and to start, uh, I guess, uh, they provided with all the hardware required in order to actually do it. Um, so they, they've actually given me a laptop, a mouse, keyboard, headphones, two screens, in fact, as well, because they know you need a, a huge setup for it. Um, the the uh, an internet subscription with enough bandwidth in order to do uh, support the voice calls and all of that. Um, as for day to day, uh, I'm currently separated uh, between 50 50. Uh, 50 percent of my time goes towards a project that we're currently doing, and the other 50 percent goes towards BAU business as usual. Um, so that's just stuff like uh, making sure that we have the proper certificates uh, renewed for all the websites that we have, making sure that any tickets are, are properly managed, all of that essentially. And for projects, it's very, very um, dynamic. It depends on what's required at that, on that stage. A lot of what I've been doing has been uh, just test cases, really. Um, so building... Uh, building test cases to go against our infra uh, like uh, environment uh, for AWS and a lot of what that entails is a presenting presenting what it is that you have done uh, which is something that uh, generation has really they did they did at the time what I thought was in excess like they, they, they had you present a lot of different things. Whatever you'd learn, you need to present it. Whatever new thing you worked on, you'd need to present it. Uh, but I found that um, even though we would do one maybe like weekly, that's not enough. <laughs> or at least it feels that way. Because um, you, you, you absolutely also need to uh, do that skill is very, very, very useful in a position such, a, uh, such as mine. Uh, where I find myself presenting what I've done constantly, essentially. Yeah, yeah, like I, I, I used to break this down. I used to mentor a lot of um, transition year students and they'd ask, you know, well, why are we doing this in school? And I was like, you don't believe the type of stuff that you will use in the real world at some stage. I could break it down from a recruitment perspective, but even, you know, from uh, you, your, um, your AWS role now, everything is communication. Everything is the confidence to be able to stand up in front of people and give your own opinion. And I suppose that's what we're trying to draw out of people. And um, it's quite rewarding to see when you see people obviously in your position that can run with it and um, you know, well done on that. So like in terms then of maybe the next steps within AXA for you, what kind of trajectory can you go on now? Has that been outlined? Do you even know or is it too soon to say? Um, it's. I, I don't think it's too too soon to say. Uh, I am currently on a uh, fixed uh, fixed term contract with an absolute potential of, of it renewing, um, and that is we we kind of we kind of got I got hired as kind of a batch of two, uh, where they're kind of testing both of us uh, and seeing which one which one will proceed essentially, um, and that that's that's kind of that's kind of a fun fun environment. And assuming assuming they're satisfied, then I would absolutely stay stay internal. I would be in the same team, but uh, take on essentially more work with with new contract that comes with new responsibilities, yada yada. And I and I do plan I do plan on on staying um, staying with AXA. They're uh, I believe they're the the way that they work. Everything everything that they do is very um, uh, it's 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 typical of of the uh, tech industry and those skills are transitional in case i ever do want to transition it so i i, I want to absolutely learn everything that there is to learn 
uh, before even thinking of of changing tracks, essentially. Yeah, I, like it's even from the you know half an hour conversation that we've had. I think you you have a thirst for learning. You know, you're almost like a sponge. It's give me more, give me more, give me more. And like, you know, anyone that I've been advising in my career uh, from a recruitment perspective, that's what kind of sets you apart. Technology advances so quickly that if you're not, if you're even standing still, you're behind because it, it's moving so quick. So, you know. Um, it's just never ending so the the fact that you're looking for more um, is quite good and another aspect that you touched upon there which I think is important to mention is you're on a fixed term contract and for anyone that doesn't understand that it's it's not a permanent contract it's for you know obviously a duration of time but you've seen that as an opportunity for you to get real world experience you know hone your skills join an organization and that will stand to you Um, now obviously um, we're we're hopeful that it that it proves successful at the end, and I've absolutely no doubt that it will. And you'll you'll continue with your career with Axit. But you know, for other individuals where you know maybe from a project not getting you know extra uh, budget or the project coming to an end, it is still positive for you to take that role. It it's the same goes for an internship. Anything that you can do to get real world experience will stand to you. So, um, congrats on doing that as well, Mo. So we kind of touched upon it. You've you've been interested, you know, you interested to continue down the route with um AXA, but this is quite uh you know it, it's a bit cheesy and a bit cliche to ask, but I'm going to ask it anyway. So, um, where would you like to see your career go maybe in the next five years? Um, well, like, like kind of already kind of hit on, um, I would like to learn as much as there is possibly to learn from my current position. Um, a lot of what they do is still a mystery to me, even though I've been with them for an amount of months now. Um, so it's, it's, I, I, I really, I really do want to continue down that track, but even if that doesn't pan out, I, I, f- it feels like the skills that I already have learned, and uh, like you mentioned, the first like three, six months in a position, you learn an unbelievable amount, and that's what, that's what a lot of employee, employers look for. Uh, if you're, if you're ever applying, uh, they look for the certain, uh, I would say, like, the certain skill set that, uh, that you, uh, get when you're employed for that, uh, that first half a year or, or, or quarter of a year even. And so I, I, I feel like I'm in very, very good hands, and my plan is to just learn as much as possible in the current position that I have. But yeah, who knows? If you ask me that question, I wouldn't be able to answer it either. So don't worry about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. So um, <laughs> I'm all, also conscious that you know, true experience. You know, we learn more about ourselves. You know, as individuals. And um, this is another cliche one I'm going to throw out. But um, you know, if you if you could go back in time. To give your younger self any advice, do you know what that would be, Mo? Um, well, like I mentioned, how I uh, the 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 reason I even thought about getting going into this type of field is because I really like that the the whole idea of the automation process, where a lot of things that are done manually, even right now, in a lot of different industries, um, is being done manually when it can be just done with a click of bu- a click of a button uh, assuming you have the proper scripts and whatever I wish I would have gone more into that even earlier uh, so I, I would have learned a lot more a lot more into that and I think it would have given me give me that bit of a bit of a head start um, especially uh, especially when knowing a lot of the terms and, and all and the common lingo that that basically goes on in uh, in this type of field yeah now look at it excellent point the the thing i find with technology is when you're on the outside of it and people mention all these terms there's a fear attached to it and it almost puts people off but when you i suppose when you've I suppose even put your head through the door a little bit and you start picking them up like I did over the last eight years you go Jesus this is unbelievable like I I couldn't get my head around the amount that's going on in Ireland now in terms of what we're doing from an innovation perspective Um, you know and some people fear automation I'm of the opinion that get involved in it if if you're within the tech space and you're working on this you're the one that's making it you know so i think you know change is good um i i think back the last you know 30 years when i started out you know with a, a nokia phone and now my wallet is my phone uh it's my um tickets to an airplane everything i do is on my phone so you know every there's always advancements and like that yeah but you know the other point that you, you could kind of draw from that mo is it's never too late to get involved you know, and I think tech companies are so open 
to getting people from all types of backgrounds, particularly when they're developing products, because they need people with different, you know, different perspectives and difference of opinion to be able to develop develop a product that meets their wider markets. You know, you can't just have one perspective nowadays, and that's an aspect of technology that I love. That it was so, you know, multicultural. There was so many different demographics, um, and there's definitely scope for growth there. You know, I don't, I don't think there's enough people in it, and obviously that's where I think generation will come in. So, um, I might give you the last words, Mo, and then I'll, I'll close up. And thanks very much. Um, it's number one being very insightful, uh, and number two, obviously, hopefully, it, it might inspire some other people towards, obviously, you know, getting involved in the programs, and then secondly, it might, you know, um, inspire some more employers to get involved with ourselves to, um, you know, interview because I think. I, I've said this on a couple of um, calls that I've been with clients. Forget about listening to me. You know, talk to our graduates. They're going to sell this better than I ever will with their with their stories. Um, because I'm bought in. You can see me. I, if I, I'm only short of having a bit of popcorn here listening to you. Um, but maybe a last word for yourself. You know, in terms of maybe people that have that fear towards making this change, or maybe employers that are looking, you know, to hire and maybe have been you know, go down traditional routes, what would you say to them? I mean, it's absolutely somewhere where the, I would say the ratio of effort to reward is very, very high. Uh, that is something that really struck me as as uh, a huge positive when, it, when I initially went into it, um, where it might, it might not seem it might not even seem that way when when you're from the outside or whatever but a lot of a lot of the different skills that are that are that you're learning without even learning the type of theory or all that so the soft skills that, that you were talking about talking to new people that you that you aren't um, aren't or don't know and if you ha if you ever even struggle with that then they help you with that with uh, with my mentor who was very very helpful made me basically changed me in in the in the few months that that we knew each other or like we're working together in the in there it's just a very 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 good opportunity if you're even if you even have a slight hesitation of wanting to like you've been saying take that chance or, or go into uh this type of field yeah and look uh, you know i always remember back to my own career i always try and put myself in people's shoes but you know i had a manager that took a chance on me and that that's you know and that's all it takes is you know one person to take a chance that makes it you know a big difference not only to the individual's life but maybe future generations you know that's it's you know if you're in that position of power take the chance but um no look it's been an absolute pleasure listening to you mo uh good luck into the future i've absolutely no doubt um that you're one to watch out for the future so um wherever it takes you and um, we we were glad to play a small part but um 99 of it was down to yourself so well done on that front um just want to thank everyone for listening in this has been the first of our installments of these interviews and um, over the next kind of weeks and months we will be bringing you some more kind of shared stories from employers that we've worked with um and and also more uh, graduates that um, we've obviously helped. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. Um, maybe just in terms of obviously Generation Ireland and where we're going. To date, we've helped 400 students um, graduate um, and we're, we're trying to drive those numbers up as much as possible. So if you've listened in and you're interested in getting involved with the program, feel free to reach out to me via LinkedIn or my email address is ronan.connell at generation.org um, you can see my name there in case people can't spell Irish names um, or likewise if you're an employer that's been inspired by Mo's story and you're hiring across AWS data analytics IT support or um, retrofitting is going to be absolutely huge in Ireland so if anyone wants to reach out to me feel free to reach out and I can point you in the right direction or help you myself so thanks very much Mo enjoy the evening and uh Thanks for sharing your story. Anytime.